And not just a friend, but also in football terms, a legend, Brian Robson. Straight away, is Gareth the man for the job to go to the Euro finals? Oh, it's ridiculous. I mean, I think. Give that guy a break. Bruno, even though I love him and I think he's a great player, my captain would be probably somebody else in our squad. Now, when Gary Neville starts giving you stick about your fashion, <laughs> now you yeah, know no, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. <laughs> yeah. So, what we'd like to know here on No Tippy Tappy Football, Brian and Sam, football legends, what is your favourite condiment? Hey everybody, thank you for joining us for another episode of No Tippy Tappy Football, brought to you by William Hill. Good morning, Sam, how are morning, you? Morning, Natalie, how are you? I'm good, how was your international break? Uh, international break was very good, it's interesting. I, I think I, probably this morning I'm a little sick for Wales, oh, uh, you know, yeah, that, losing on penalties. Are you uh, really? I am, but yeah, honestly. <laughs> I mean, I, I have I have great, great friends that work with me in Welsh, like you mean, so... Uh, and and uh, and I think that uh, they were a big part of Chris Coleman's regime when they did so well in the in the Euro. So they worked for me um, after that. So and we've had a few but, Welsh yeah. guests. Lately, I don't mind. We? I mean, I've got Scottish parents, Robbo. So I like Scotland and and England getting through. But also, I don't mind it. I'm, how long is it since Scotland, England, and Wales actually competed in a in a in a tournament in? Europe, European uh, Euros or, or the World Cup. I can't think. A long were they, time. Were they not all in the last Euros? Were it's they? About, I'm not sure. Might have been. They might have Wales, been. Well, Scotland weren't, I don't think. No, I don't think, think Scotland, Scotland were. Made it. Yeah, we uh, were. We were rubbish, yeah. I'm Scottish. <laughs> that is, of course, the voice of our of our special guest today. Sam, would you like to in, <laughs> introduce yes, it's a, your it's special a great guest? great pleasure for me to, uh, to introduce a friend of mine, not just a friend, but also in, in football terms, a legend. He didn't like that term, by the way, but he is. And uh, it's uh, Brian Robson. Brian, thank you very much. Well, for thanks very much, today. Sam. Great to see thank you. you. Brian, thank Love you so you. much. Thank you for being here today. We always like to start by finding out, and I, I imagine there's some good stories here, how you know each other, where have your paths crossed in football, or indeed, how far can you go back? Well, I need to get something straight right from the start, is that Sam's calling me a legend there. My wife calls me a leg end. <laughs> <laughs> so I just needed to get that out there, right, you know, before we start. She's keeping you grounded, Brian. I like it. Yeah. I, can't, I can't say what my wife calls me sometimes. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so how far do you go back? Oh, I think probably West Brom, wasn't it? I think. West Brom. Yeah, when I played West mm. Brom, you played Bolton. Bolton yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. With 3D. Because uh, yeah. with really being the same age as me, but Sam's just got a few years on me. <laughs> uh, right. But we played against each other then when both teams were trying to be just that little bit more successful and be in the, the top division. Uh, so we played against each other on a few occasions where Bolton and West Brom were really competing against yeah. each other, you, you know, to get into the top league. Wow. Is that your earliest memory? Yeah. Yeah. And then since then? Since then, it was, I don't know, did we compete against each other's manager? I can't remember. I'm yeah. Not sure, did, yeah. Yeah. You must have beat me, that's why I can't remember. <laughs> 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 He's blanked that one out. <laughs> no, with uh, Middlesbrough and Bolton. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's true, yeah, right. He, he's, lo he's losing it. You know, <laughs> well, you know when I you get to. About like that, <laughs> he remembers all his victories, Brian. I'm telling you, he remembers them all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay, so. Well, I was. Uh, no, well, you were doing a great job with Bolton and you, you started bringing in some really good foreign players. So, yeah. And I'd done the same up at Borough with Ravenelli and Juninho, people like that. Uh, I was just starting to bring in foreign players. Where people up in Middlesbrough were saying, "Yeah, you're never going to bring in top foreign players up at Borough. Nobody will come." <laughs> hey, listen, I had asked him how he did that. Yeah, how did he do it? Well, what did he tell he you? Told me, Matt. Did he tell you the truth? Going seeing them, we're going drawing out, flying them, which is so it was a bit of a bit of a copycat, if you like. So, uh, did you copy Brian a little bit? Yeah, because I talked to him, Matt. How did you manage to get them players there? Like you mean so. I mean, basically, you know, if you do if you do your, your own work, and we, we flew out to see him, obviously, I think I said that before. Um, 
obviously there's a much bigger attraction than, but obviously playing in the Premier League is what everybody wanted, wasn't it? Yeah. Even more so now, probably. And um, and uh, you know, to I think um, when you're a manager, and then the, then the club you're working for, if you can bring them type of players to the club that have never been seen before, that's that's a bit of an achievement, like I mean. So, uh, God, yeah, you know, it's 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 it was a well, it was a great time, probably the best time I had as a manager. Anyway, that's for sure. I thought the important uh, part when you're trying to bring in top players um, from abroad and, you know, they weren't used to the area or know the area or the club really with with Middlesbrough. Um, I always thought uh, as a player, you need to sit with your manager and the manager needs to tell you why he wants you, why he wants you to play in the way that he wants you to play. And I think that's really important uh, to play. Yeah. And so when I thought I was bringing or going to try to bring some really good players in, I wanted to sit in front of the player and say to him, this is the reason why I want you to come to Middlesbrough because we've got ambitions, new tra- uh, new stadium, new training ground. But this is why I want you to be in because this is where we want to go. And I think the player wants to hear that. If you send your chief exec, who's the money man, and he goes and he sits and he does a deal um, with the club, and then all of a sudden he's sitting talking to the player about why he wants you to go to Middlesbrough, the player doesn't know and he doesn't really understand. He wants to talk to a football person to try and convince him that he should come to your club. So that was his style. Go out and see them, speak to them face to face, tell tell them how they fit in. You do it. Juninho, I went to uh, San Paulo to sign him. I went to Turin to sign Ravanelli, Porto uh, uh, to sign Emerson, Christian Zega. I went to Milan uh, to convince him. I went to Rome uh, to get Alan Boxix. Uh, but I tell you what, they were great cities and uh, I had a couple of good nights out there and, uh, having a bite to eat. There's and, a shock, and a couple drink. of good nights out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you didn't think I just went for no, the No, 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 no. Straight, yeah, straight to bed when you finish, weren't you? <laughs> straight home, keep working, yes. Well, you worked hard to get them players then, so you deserved deserved them becoming. I, it, it was great. The, the hardest one was Juninho because he was the first. But then so many players liked the style of Juninho. When I started going to get the other players, they'd heard now of Middlesbrough. We moved into the new stadium. Um, and so it was a little bit easier signing the other boys because they wanted to play with Juninho. I had that, you see. I mirrored, I mirrored that with York IF. Yeah. He was he was the start of the Bolton regime at the time, which obviously mirrored a bit of what, what Middlesbrough did, you know. And funnily enough, sitting down, and I've talked about this before, because we're not really, they're not really managers now, right? Are they? They're, they're head coaches these days. Yeah, but sitting down with your player, and, and I have said this story, I think, I don't know, a while back, where I had a player come in and sit down when he brought his wife in with me, and uh, after passing everything, the contract and everything like that, refused to sign him on because his wife kept answering the questions. So I just went... I'm not signing his wife. I'm trying to sign this player. And I don't want. I don't want somebody that's going to going to interfere in what what the day to day football activities are. If he's if he's sat there with his wife and she's talking and telling me about what he where really he likes to play, what he wants to do. <laughs> so I just said, "Oh, I'm sorry, like you mean," and uh, which was a huge disappointment because you, you know the lengths we go to. To sign a player, medical, medical scouting, and all that. Well, one, one day, day but, one you know day. What I mean? So, it were, well, he did go off to Scotland. Oh, okay. Oh, someone's going to piece this together on online mm. now. Anyway. Um, now, we always um, get lots of tweets in, Brian. We get lots of tweets in. Uh, we get messages on our YouTube questions, or sometimes just our, um, you, our wonderful listeners and followers leave us messages. And there was one that came through on social media this week, and I replied, Sam, saying, "Don't tell Sam." All oh, right, but. We're going to see what you think because, um, Brian, your last managerial job was managing Thailand. 
somebody tweeted to see if Sam was aware that the Maldives international job is currently being <laughs> advertised. It, he'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if it's not Dubai, the Maldives will fit in lovely. That sounds like a cracking uh, job, Sam. Listen, I, I, I don't know whether he's still there now, but I've met the Prime Minister of Maldives many, many times. Oh, no. Uh, I went out with a very good, a good friend of mine I met in London at West Ham. Uh, Alan Governor and actually passed because of COVID, sadly. And he was a big Moldavian, and he he took me out there. And actually, West Ham and also had a link for Academy. I don't know where it went in the end because I I left. But uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful island, and um, it's known for what animal that's extinct? Oh, I don't know. The dodo. Oh, so it's a school yeah. day. So you, you get educated you everywhere mean? you go. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful island, by the way. Wonderful island. Okay, so no, I'm not so sure. I'd, I'd, I'd like to manage manage the the team. I'm not so sure. I feel like that might be the, perfect. The, the, just a couple of times a year. Quite be good enough, like you mean. To, <laughs> you when when I went to Thailand, though, I I really enjoyed international management because uh, I was starting to get um, not fed up because I always loved management, loved being involved in the game, but started to have. Uh, grandkids, that sort of thing, and the job is just twenty four hours, seven days a week. When you're a manager, you're always you're in bed and you're thinking about <laughs> you've picked your team, or you think you've picked your team, <laughs> yeah. and then you're going, "Have I really picked the right team here? Or should I play him? Or should I play?" And then you might get a phone call. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm ill. I uh, I think after it's Gaza can't make Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, because he, he had Gaza for a while, like oh, mean, such, a, such a talent. Yeah, he had Gaza for a while. No, well, I'm crazy because obviously I'm a little bit crazy, not quite as crazy as him though, because we think <laughs> he lit Gaza was born about four mile up the road from where I was born. Um, I played against him when he was 18 when he made his debut for Newcastle. Uh, I'd watched him come through. Uh, then sort of played with him, uh, with England, uh, all his a- antics and everything that he used to get up to. And yet when I was manager of Middlesbrough, I was still mad enough to sign him. <laughs> <laughs> what was he like to manage? <clears throat> you know what? He, when he was fit and well and enjoying his football, he, he was a joy because he just loved playing football and he wanted everybody to, to love him. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was Gaza's downfall because he, he tried to impress people all the time because he just wanted everybody to like him. Uh, but then when he got injured and he was out and he couldn't join in with the lads in train and everything, then he was an absolute nuisance value around around the training ground because <laughs> he'd be getting up to all, all sorts, sorts of yeah. tricks. Uh, uh, nightmare. So we mentioned a little bit before um, Wales played obviously its international break. Obviously, England had two friendlies as well. Uh, what was friendlies? Friend, friendlies? Friendlies? They're not, well, they are Belgium? friendlies, but they're not friendlies, are they? But I mean, you know, they're not friendly. No, there's no such thing as a friendly for Gareth. You know what I mean? He can, you know, the friendly is judged. He's judged just as much as he's judged if it's an international tournament or a qualifying round. So, you know, whatever, whatever it might be, um, you, you're just hoping the team performs to the level you they they would expect and you would expect. And um, you know, I think they did. So that, oh, I thought they were absolutely terrific and. Uh, the, the only problem, the only thing that let them down last night was the finishing, and, and of course my big my big worry with the quality of the players is is there's a, there's an area that's been created where we're a little suspect when we lose possession in defending terms, and if we don't if we if we if we don't have the best defensive record or one of the best defensive records in the Euros, we won't win it. And that will be the big problem, like I mean. So, well, there was a couple of mistakes last night. Yeah, as there well, was someone that mm. um, you know you got that. But you know, when you talk about the England manager and sort of like Gareth's position at the moment, 
if he wins all the friendlies, um, that's fine. It's never mentioned. Uh, you draw and you lose. Uh, all of a sudden, there's a few question marks, and I've seen it in the papers well, this morning. Well, you know better than anybody else the time you spent with England, don't you? Like, I mean, and with Terry Venables, because yeah, Brian would assist it with Terry Venables in was that ninety six? Was it? Yeah, ninety six. Yeah. So uh, ninety four and ninety six. I yeah. was his assistant, which I loved the job <laughs> because. Terry was taking all the pressure. <laughs> and you can chill in the background. You get on with training. You join in with yeah. the lads and yeah. the banter and everything. Uh, but Terry's the one who's got to go out and face the music with the uh, the media and everything. Uh, you know, but that's, that's part and parcel of the job when you're manager of your country, the expectations, especially with England. But I think over the years, Gareth's done really well. And, well, I say you get beat off Brazil, you know, he's more or less got to change his whole team for the Belgium game. And then you, you get up the next day when, like Sam says, they played some good football, um, which we can go on to. And that, but um, they get a draw against one of the best teams. I think they're uh, rated at fourth in the world at the moment, Belgium. So it's never going to be an easy game. But straight away, is Gareth the man for the job to go to the Euro finals? Oh, it's oh, ridiculous. Well, I mean, that, I think the guy's got us there, it, yeah. like, and really well. And he's give all these kids chances to come through and prove themselves. Give the guy a break. Last, last night, like you were saying, some of the football that they played, I mean, especially in that midfield area and coming off the, the front, I mean, Maynou, Bellingham. Bellingham yeah. Uh, Rice, Rice yeah. Foden, Foden the, yeah. the, the way they were. Yeah. So, Ivan Tony had it, it looks all right. He, he? he did, you he held I mean? the ball up well, well up, Sam, didn't he? Could score a goal. Yeah. You know, um, yeah, it's a, it's a good foil to look at him and, and Harry Kane to be, to be the, Ollie Watkins still, still probably the next one if he's going to take three. The fight uh, is still on there. Yeah. Isn't it? You know, yeah. Who goes? Yeah. Yeah. Must be nice for England fans to have Ivan. Know that they've got Ivan Tony for penalties, though. I mean, that must feel good because that man can score well, yeah, a penalty. Well, uh, but Harry's just as good. Well, it's it, just it, a shame Harry missed one at the most crucial time in his his career. Like you mean, like you mean. So sorry. Oh no, that's Sam's phone. That's me. Sorry. <laughs> that's a pause. A pause. Mm. Okay, so Sam's phone is ringing during the recording of the podcast. Sam, was that the Maldives FA? No. <laughs> No, it, it was Lynn saying, uh, Get some bread okay, on the way home. You're okay, Sam. Uh, I've got the flights booked for Thailand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, you must have been really chuffed with your United hat on to see Kobe Mainu last night, to see his progress this season, to see him getting into the England team. Yeah. It's always great when you're connected with a club and uh, a young lad comes through from the academy um, and they impress. But mentally and physically, they impress. And for me, since I, I saw him in preseason when we were over in the US, uh, he played against Arsenal and he was playing against Declan Rice. And he did really well in the game, but unfortunately he got injured and that kept him out for quite a time. Um, but it, it's his control and his mental control the lad looks as if he's grounded. He keeps his feet on the ground. He's really pleasant around the training camp. And so if he keeps his feet on the ground and keeps working at his game, he's got a great chance to have a great career with England and a great career with Manchester United. What about keep, a great you Euros? You've got to keep level-headed, you know. Okay. Somebody in his life, and Brian agree with this, the, the amount of, the amount of uh, pressure that comes on a youngster so young getting in the side can be very, very destructive. I read he still lives at home with his yeah. dad, Sam. You know what I mean? So somewhere, somewhere we've seen so many young players, and then all of a sudden, in four or five, four or five years on, you go, where, where, where has he gone? Like, I mean, you know, where's, you know? So there's so much, so much uh, pressure on them. Not just pressure, but there's some. Uh, that so we need to keep the every talk about keep your feet on the ground like keep level headed and um you know but 
not too many interviews. I mean, Sir Alex was the best for that one, he and his youngsters. Yeah. Protecting him. You know, the class of 92, he wouldn't he wouldn't let them go too far. He kept a, a close tag on them, like you mean, when, they, well, I, I, when I, they were getting carried away, you know. You know, so sometimes, Sam, what it is as well, isn't it? you know, we, we say keep your feet on the ground. You can get a little bit carried away because your rise has been pretty quick and and it's really good. But then you get carried away with yourself because you're going, ah, right, I've, I've made it here now. But no, it's sustaining it and staying there. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, people from outside the game will go, oh, you should be doing this, you should be doing that. Yeah. And so all of a sudden, you're getting into fashion, you're getting into social media, whatever it is, and it's distracting you from your game and your training. Because... Where you make your reputation, where you make your money, mainly is how you play on a Saturday or with games, whatever yeah. day it is now. Any now day. it is, but <laughs> yeah, but that's where you make your reputation. You make and, your and they make your money down, don't you? Yeah, you, I, mean, you do. I mean, you won't make as much money anywhere else. Yeah, you know, you can have all this, you know, modeling. You can have all these brands. You can have all the social media following that he gets, but that won't that won't continue unless he stays as a top footballer. And the money yeah. that paid to a top footballer now, the millions and millions of pounds, it'd be barely. Well, it's just, let's say he stays five years on top of his game. Yeah. Financially, unless he's got somebody that tries to rip off, rip him off, which he will come across. Yeah, your commercial contract I mean, will stay there for three or four years, then. You're not doing it on the pitch. Your performances have gone down. You maybe drop out the England squad a couple of occasions. And then all of a sudden, uh, where's your commercial value now? It's not there. Yeah. There are all the dangers he's facing, which we all hope to any youngster. I mean, look how level-headed and how patient Phil Foden's been. Mm -hmm. He's had a couple of not Warnings. just anti with England, you know what I mean? It, 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 was it in Iceland or wherever it was? With you know what I mean? And we look what's happened to some of the you know United players. So Kobe Mine, who continues this form for Brilliant. United, does do you take him to the Euros and do you start him in the Euros? I'd look at him and I'd say probably yes, because Declan Rice, I think, is a cert. Bellingham can play in there; is absolute cert. Um, but there's nobody who's proven that they're much better than him. Uh, but he's got to keep it going to the end of the season in big games. Um, but I'm sure he can do that. And then if he gets another couple of chances, which I'm sure he will after his performance last night, uh, before the Euros, I think there's every chance he can make it. I mean, you mentioned everyone talking about the attacking flair. It's because it's so incredible as well, isn't it? When you're looking at if, if everybody's fit and you've got Harry Kane, Phil Foden, if Saka, Jude Bellingham, who else? I mean, Where's your so mate? Oh, Grealish. Grealish, we've not even mentioned him. Come on. <laughs> and he's I didn't even know minute. that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, he is. Yeah. But he's coming back, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. but we yeah. haven't, we haven't even mentioned him. To this. Yeah. Well, who I hope he'd be after you. <laughs> Jack, he'll be with me. Sorry, Jack. <laughs> I'll put you in my England team. <laughs> Who else would you have though in that attacking? Because England have got so many options. I mean, Cole Palmer. There's loads of options. Rashford. You know, we haven't mentioned him. No. You know, they, they, they've got like, like you say, attacking wise, we've got so many options, and and sometimes that's really good because if you stay in a game and the forwards are just not quite firing on all cylinders. What Gareth can do, he can freshen up by making three changes uh, into his midfield area, and they come they come in, and if they're on on song, might England make can them better, might it? from all over. Might actually yeah. make them better than that. I yeah. think they're that good. It's a bit like Man City's team. Yeah. Anybody comes out, anybody comes in, just just as well. Sometimes yeah. even better than the one that's come out. Yeah. yeah. And I think England have got that in the twenty three man squad that he selects. Like I mean, I think that uh, there's only there's only injuries. That are going to, you know, going to affect that. And injuries. There are some key players still, like everybody has. Yeah. Obviously, Bell, Jude Bellingham's got a key, key player. I think Declan Rice is a key player. Yeah. And obviously Harry Kane because yeah. the goals and you know, so they're probably the three of the most key players. Pickford in goal. 
And it's it, through the spine, isn't it? It's through Sam, the spine. Well. We, yeah, all, we always say that as coaches, managers, players, whatever. whatever yeah. you, you always go back to the spine of the team. And more or less our best, steadiest players are through the spine, which is really good for, for England. And there's so many players on the fringes as well that are having great seasons. I mean, Jared Bowen, Anthony Gordon, would you take them? Would they be in your squad? Well, no, there's too many in front front of them with more experience. Like I mean, apart from Jared Bowen, as and could have scored an hat trick last night, and he's scoring lots of goals for West Ham, so uh, he de- he deserves to continue. And the way he's playing for West Ham, and the way he played to last night against Belgium, fourth in the world in the rankings, so it's not some mediocre international team. Uh, he's quick and strong, any he, some. But he's he's coming off the line and finding these pockets and spaces. I mean, he scored a, scored a goal, had two or three other attempts at goal, um, assist wise. So you know, he put put a lot of the other lads under pressure, like Rashford and Grealish, and and you know, Saka. Here I am. Yeah. There, if I keep doing this, dare not pick me to Gareth, like you mean. So you know. It, Everybody would say he wouldn't be a popular choice at the moment, but I think you can't rule any, you can't rule anybody out at this stage. And if they go from now till the end of the season and continue, then a big, the big decision is leaving some of his older, more experienced who've been with him longer, and actually being brave enough to say I'm sorry. Like who? Give us a name. Like Glenn did with the. Uh, well, it's a Gaza. bit like Phillips and. A- you, you know, Phillips, he's yeah. went to West Ham, yeah. hasn't picked up his form so much, and and, and he's a good he's, player, yeah. and he's been in Ryan loads Sterling. of tournaments. He's done it with Ryan Sterling, yeah, yeah Sterling doesn't you know even I mean? get a mention Not now. A mention now, oh, good point. You know, yeah. so he's, he's going to have to look at that again and say who. who and what happens is all those who are, who are in that position should pick them, kick their own backsides, and get themselves back in the team. And back on the pitch in the Premier League from now to end of the season to try and guarantee not just do well for their football club, which they're paid to do, but get themselves in the picture for for the international. I, I uh, think with Gareth, though, at this moment of time, I'd, I'd be surprised if he doesn't have more or less 18, 19 players who he knows if they're fit and well, they're going to go be in. in that yeah. squad. And then there'll be fringe players who he'll go up. Well, if they play really well, how I know they can, they'll be in. And then there'll be others who go up. No, I'll just give you a little bit more of a chance to prove yourself and make your way into the squad, which it should be, because right up to the last minute, you you should be able to have a chance of at least getting in there in the last couple of positions. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Uh, one man that continues to, though, obviously, is Declan Rice. 50 caps he's on now for England. He captained oh, England he? for the first time. I don't know. 24. I feel like young, yeah. Yeah, he's yeah. 24. Uh, started, you know, by the way, started as a centre-half. Did he? Yeah. Okay. Mm, pushed him into midfield, because probably because they needed him there. Yeah. And, and you know, nobody talks about where he... Where he, what he, how he was brought up. Like most most of the players start up here and go. Yeah, yeah, everyone wants to be a striker. You know I mean? And you end up somewhere along the line, like you mean. So it's not often they go from there to there. You know what I mean? And he's he's handled it brilliantly. Like I mean, I, mean, I, I watched him when I was last game of the season. No, last but one at Leeds, like you mean. And I saw him live for the first time. And I'm on the touchline, I'm going, oh, God, no. <laughs> be battered as in midfield. I'm just overran us. Do 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 anything. He looks a good lad as well, yeah, doesn't he? Because he lad, always yeah. seems to have a smile on his face. Yeah. He looks as if he enjoys the challenge and everything. Uh, you know, but he uh, he's a top player. He's all, all round. He, he knows what he's doing. And then even with Arsenal, when we're talking about being a sitting player, I mean, Arsenal have said to him, "No, get yourself forward and you know have a bit goals, of an yeah. attack." And, mm. So sort of side to yourself, and he and he's done it, you know. So before we move on to other topics outside of England, just two questions left for you on England. Will England win the Euros this summer? They've got every chance because I don't think there's an outstanding team out there uh, like in the past. 
like the Spains, the Germans, the Italians. Uh, so I don't think there's an outstanding team out there. Um, and we've got experience now. Some of these, even the young ones, have got experience of the last competition in Euros. They've got World Cup experience under the belt. So they know what the competition's all about now. So like Sam said, they've got to step up to the plate when it's the big game and who's going to turn it on and win you the game. Sam, same. Uh, uh, absolutely, the, 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 there's only there's, there's only them can lose it for me. And, and Brian's talking about experience. Gareth's got all the experience he needs because you got you got to remember he took the job. Um, he, he only managed under twenty ones, and before that, he managed Middlesbrough for a couple of years, and that was it. The experience he's gained over the last what is it six years is going to be massive to him in helping the team and him bring the best success in 66. And I think that's only theirs to lose it. So post-Euros, post-Gareth Southgate. And we're doing the Euros. We are. We're doing Euro yes. podcasts. We are. We are we'll be the keeping Euros you updated. Right, aren't we, like, yes, eh? we will. We're going to well, keep you busy. Yeah, so we'll no holiday in, please. I know. Sorry I've about that. cancel too. Get Thailand in before you go. <laughs> you start doing yeah, the podcast. Yeah, I was going to say, don't yeah. phone me. I'm on holiday. <laughs> <laughs> damn, damn. I'll push your holiday, Brian. <laughs> Um, post Euros, if Gareth doesn't stay on as England manager, whatever happens, Jose Mourinho has said that he would like to be an international manager one day. Could you see him as an England manager? No, I can't see the fit for the FA. No, no, we've tried, we've tried all that, and Bobby Robson was a really good international manager. Terry Venables was a really good international manager. Gareth has proved him proved himself in the competitions to be a good international manager. When we went down that foreign one, we had nothing but disasters. So why do it again? I agree. I didn't have enough time to be a great England manager. You've Sadly. got the best win record of any, <laughs> Sam, of any. Um, so, there we go. I think that, um, it, yes, he has to be, it has to be one of our own. You know, you're a big fan of English managers. Absolutely, yeah. So if Gary Southgate doesn't continue as England manager at any point in his career, in fact, in the near future, is the rumours about Manchester United, Brian. I don't know, I feel like they took me a bit out of shock. I was like, we're, 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 we're rumouring him to Man United before a Euros. But what did you think when you heard the rumours? No, well, this is exactly what the media do. I mean, they want him out of England, uh, out of England job now when it's coming into the competition instead of supporting them. And then there's uh, losing his focus on England by mentioning Manchester United and that. And to be fair, we've got new owners who are going to have their own ideas. And all that, but I think that's where the speculations come from, Brian, isn't it? Because cause Jim Radcliffe's taken over. It, the, it's, all of a sudden, he's Ten Hag Steen. Yeah. That was never mentioned prior to him securing the position he secures like you mean so so I put it's it's putting on an awful lot of pressure I mean there's enough pressure at Man United as it is as uh, as the manager without that constant nagging in the back of your yeah. your mind like you mean he's 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 going to the job is that what they're really thinking? As have they have they sat down with him and said look no look this is not gonna happen um could you, see him as, could you see Gareth as a Man United manager? Because Roy Keane has said he couldn't see him as a fit. I'm not. I'm not so sure. If 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 Gareth walked away from England, I'm not wanted, sure he'd want it. No, I think he'd, and I think he'd also want to rest. That's what I mean, Sam. I'm not so sure. I, I, Gareth I, I, would want if it. he's feeling the pressure of England, which is. Oh, Unbelievable. You know what I mean? It's all right the in-between when yeah. you're quite relaxed. But when it's on, it's really on. And I, I only had that one game, like I said. But but Man United is on every, like me and Brian said, Man United's on every day, every week, every month, every year. It's n n never ending, the intrusion. So, and I'm not so sure... That he, he, after always done for England, he'd want that. Certainly, he wouldn't want to jump into it straight away. For me, I, I've got to say, 
that because of we've changed our manager so many times and that over well since Alex really um, I wouldn't mind seeing I mean it's not my decision but I wouldn't mind seeing Ten Hag there next season Do you think to to kind of cement that he needs to qualify for the Champions League or win the FA Cup? Yeah I also think this he needs to get on with the new regime Mm. Yeah. You always say that during. Uh, the well, you know, we saw, we saw Tootle manipul- manipulate himself out of Chelsea with the new regime. We saw his press conferences. It always helps Sam, doesn't it? If he you didn't get want on to with stay there. Owners. Yeah, he didn't yeah. want to stay there. You could see it. You see it in his press conference, he was cleverly manipulating his mm. his his way out, which is, which they fell for, because mm. he ultimately ended up sacking. This is exactly what they went on. You know, we yeah, happened you- at Tottenham. It? Yeah, if you if you get on with Anto- the people who run the club, not particularly the owners, but the people who actually run the club, as a manager, it's really important that you get on with them and you just work together really well if you're going to be successful. You won't get any success if you don't do that. So what is look at Pep's regime? Look at Liverpool's regime. You look at Man United's regime with 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 Sir Alex and before that, Sir Matt Busby, of course. But like it was the whole infrastructure that we're all working together for the benefit of the the benefit of the football club, not just what it's, what Sir Alex did above with David Gill and and I mean letting them both go at the same time I thought was a mistake. But you know, the I've had many I've had so many football clubs that the relationship up is more important than anything else. And if that's if that's fractured, you know ultimately you're going to pay the price. Irrespective of how successful you might run the field, they're going to be waiting for you and get you sooner or later. I think it was always David Gill's idea that when Sir Alex went, because they'd worked so well together, he would move on when Sir Alex moved on some... Um, you know, so I, I think that was always a plan in David's uh, mind that he would move on with Sir Alex. I don't disagree with that at all, Brian, but it's irresponsible of the owners of the football club not to say to David, like, just just help Moisey in. Yeah. Six, give six months or just a season, which is eight months, isn't it? You know, eight, nine months. Get get just in before you you before you mean to show him the Man United ropes. Yeah, I know what you mean. I mean, let's face it, Mister Woodward had no idea how it went because he's coming from London as a sponsorship director or whatever his yeah. title was, which brought great amounts of money in for Man United, of course, which was only due to the success on the pitch, by the way. But he comes from there, having not dealt with all the press, having not dealt with players' contracts, agents' negotiations, yeah, not releasing stuff to the press, which I hear he did before decisions were made, and and that just is such a a bad thing for the manager and the football club as a whole because. The, 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 all of a sudden, there's fractures that are breaking down, and if they're, and, and if they're breaking down above you, then that's never going to work. No matter how good a manager you are, it broke down with Mourinho, mm-hmm. Ten Hag. You know what I mean? Not Ten Hag. Um, mm-hmm. Sorry, Mike. Yeah, well, it did. Yeah, you know it what I mean? Ten Hag as well. Yeah. yeah. What is Louis it? Van Gaal? That's what I was thinking of. You know, oh, I mean, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you got. You've got top managers there. Yeah. You and know, and the guy after Louis van Gaal, whose name's gone, who was supposed to go up into the boardroom and then became Austrian manager, who's, his name is, I've forgotten him. I've forgotten his name. Oh, yeah. He yeah. just didn't do anything. Uh, interim, though, did he? Yes. Interim, yes. Ra- uh, Ram- Ram- Ranjik. Ranjik. Ralph. Yeah, Ralph. Who got him? Yes, Ralph Ranjik. I mean, who got him? I mean, weird. you know, whoever's doing that. And we all know that everybody's saying about it. And and that's the recruitment has been has been the the biggest 
downfall for Man United. Brian, you Manchester United's longest serving captain. Your nickname was Captain Marvel. Um, how did that come about? Yeah, how, oh yeah, how did that come about? Come on, how did Very that come nice, about? Sam. <laughs> uh, it was Sir Bobby Robson. Um, was it? Yeah. Brilliant. What, what it was, we we were playing Yugoslavia in Belgrade. They were in our European uh, or the Europe, U- European Championships and we had to go to Yugoslavia and win to make sure we qualified. And we went there and we beat them 4-0 um, in Belgrade. And so I, I'd scored the first goal, then I'd create the second goal. Uh, I, I, I did, I, you know when you know you've You're on a good played, game, pretty, on a good day, yeah. played pretty well. So we go into the uh, press conference after the game and one of the journalists said, uh, well, what, what about your captain? Uh, what about his performance? And he went, what Captain Marvel is, is what can I say about him? <laughs> and after that, that <laughs> after that press conference, that's when it that's when it stuck. That's brilliant. I mean, my grandson, who's ten now, but when he was about six, he, granddad, why they call you? He used some superhero. And all that. And I go, no, not quite, Ollie. <laughs> oh, you are a superhero to so many, though, Brian. Um, in terms of the Manchester United captaincy, there's been quite a lot of questions uh, raised around Bruno Fernandes. I mean, from people like Wayne Rooney, Simon Jordan, people question his ability or, or should he be Manchester United captain? How do you view him as a captain? I, I think Bruno leads by example. He, he works so hard. He's a lovely lad around the place. Um, you know, he's got a great attitude, uh, gets on well with, with with the players, but he's that attacking minded player, and I'm a little bit biased towards that. Where I always think a defender who is looking at the whole picture in front of yourself, or a central midfield player who you're you're attached to the forwards, you're attached to your midfield, and you, you're always talking to your defenders and helping them out. I think they're more natural. To be, to be a captain and be an influence on the team. Uh, I, do, I don't think uh, Bruno is one of those who really have a go at anybody, you know. And I, I, I just feel the organisation of a team should be from somebody who's really vocal um, and then quite aggressive in, in the game and the tone to get the best out of the teammates. Uh, you know, so that's that's how I see my captain. So Bruno, even though I love him and I think he's a great player, uh, my captain would be probably somebody else in our squad. Are you are you lacking? So, like, I'm, I'm thinking, like, obviously, then it was Harry. Did you like Harry Maguire as a captain if he was playing consistently still? Then from that kind of centre back position, yes. But he, even with Harry, I, I I actually see it in Harry now where he's taken that responsibility on where he knows he's come through a bad period and he know he knew he had to get that into his game, organisation and demanding from people around him to help his game. And I think Harry's brought that into his game now. Uh, I see Casemiro, for, for me, I see him, he's an organiser. He, he tells people what he wants on a football pitch. Yeah. Um, but sometimes it's a bit difficult because his English wasn't perfect. It, it it's getting better all the time. Uh, but he, but he would he, be a great captain. When you can see that, yeah, he's yeah. a bit like you, you can see him, Sam. You know when the yeah. when the play out, the goalkeeper plays out from cool. the back. Yeah. Everybody's doing it nowadays, yeah. and the two centre half score splitting. Yeah, Casemiro when he sees that people are pressing and has got, he just goes no move up the pitch and we're going to kick it long. Um, and he'll demand them to do that rather than take the chance of playing out from yeah. the back. So you can see he's got something about him where he understands the game, reads it and goes, no, we're not doing that, even though the manager might have told us to do it, but let's press up the park and get the ball long. And, and so he'll take that responsibility on 
And that's what a captain has to do. Captain sometimes has to take responsibility on the pitch. Yeah. Uh, my my biggest one was the cup final uh, in '85. Yeah. Uh, big Ron Atkinson was the manager, and uh, unfortunately, about ten minutes before half time, Kevin Moran got sent off for bringing down Peter Reid. And so, why Ke- did he bring PJ Reid down? Because Reid was quick enough to get him past him. Uh, uh, everybody, everybody <laughs> would have caught him. The referee would have caught him. <laughs> now you can tell Reid is a big bait of ours, can't you? He's been on. We've had yeah. him on. Yeah. <laughs> That'll get back to him. That one. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it will. So Kev brought down Reid, and he got sent off. And there was about ten minutes to go to half time, and Ron shouted on that I had to go back to centre-half and Frank Stapleton drop into midfield. And when he said that they had Graham Sharp and Andy Gray up front and I, both of them really good in the air and Frank Stapleton was really good in the air and I'd seen him play centre-half. And I went, Frank, Gaffer wants me to play in at the back. I said, you go to the back. I said, and I'll stay in midfield. And we got... Got to half time, and thankfully it was still uh, really nil nil. Right. <laughs> it was still nil nil. Uh, <laughs> we got, and he says, "I thought I told you to go at centre half." And I went, "Boss, I says I'm full of energy. I want to stay in midfield." I, I says, "Frank's brilliant as a centre half." I says, and "He'll come back, Andy Gray and them um, aerial." And, and so he went, "Right, we'll we'll leave it for a bit, and let's see how it goes." Thankfully, we went on, won the game, one nil because oh. Whiteside scored a great goal. But Frank had a great game at uh, centre half. Yeah, um, yeah, I don't remember that by the way. So Is that Norman coming on his left foot, bent uh, in the bottom corner. That yeah, one? that's the one. Yeah. I, I tell you what, though, Sam. I mean, like me, I'm going, Don't score <laughs> if you score. When I've said no, I'm not going centre half. You would have ripped me head off. Yeah, <laughs> it worked all right for you. Yeah, it worked, worked out all right. okay because yeah, we won the game one nil. <laughs> <laughs> I love that insight that that we get into your minds. I love it so much. Um, we a couple of other things. From, so a couple of questions on West Brom. Uh, if we go back to two thousand and five and the um, the great escape that you had at West Brom, although it's different, you know, different scale of achievement from the many many numerous trophies that you won. Where does that kind of for you? Where does that feel like it ranks in your achievements? You know, how important was that to you? Uh, it was right up there with the best because it was like being the manager. Uh, you know, getting the boys to raise the game week in, week out when the bottom of the league uh, is always difficult. Uh, and then when people were talking about the history of you, you, you never stay up if you bottom at Christmas. Uh, that was always being branded about. So when we uh, got to the January window and I brought in Kevin Campbell and Kieran Richardson from Man United, I don't know, they just give us a, a spirited lift on the training ground. And we started winning uh, a couple of games. And it just gave the boys that bit of confidence and uh the reason why we we get to, I mean, we we got to the last game of the season, we were bottom of the league anyway. Uh, but I was saying to the lads, if we beat Portsmouth at, at home, I says, that's all we've got to think about because I says, I've looked at their fixes and I really believe the other three so teams. Who else had to get. use then, Rob? I forgot. Who else had to lose? Um, to- it was. Uh, Charlton uh, Southampton Southampton had Man United at at Southampton and then Charlton and Crystal Palace uh, had not won an away game all season Season. yeah they were both playing away that day and they were both playing away Uh, the other way it was Norwich Charlton Charlton beat Norwich five uh, nil. It was Norwich who went up. Oh, Norwich who went up. Yeah, yeah. Charlton beat them five nil on the day. Wow. Um, and so, yeah, so we stayed up. But the the reason why I, I think it was um, a a great achievement for us is that 
most of the players in my squad, they'd all more or less played in the championship uh, all the careers. There wasn't many of them had played in the Premiership. So to keep a group of players like that with a, a great spirit uh, and which kept them up, uh, for me, that was a great achievement, not just by me, but all my staff. Do you think they can? Do you keep an eye on them just now? And do you think they can? They can get into the playoffs. They do you think they can. What do you sort of think oh, at yeah. the end of the season? Look, uh, West Brom, Middlesbrough. I, I always look at those two teams uh, to see how they do because I had great times uh, at both clubs. Um, yeah, so I always look at them, hoping that we're going to get promoted uh, into into the Premiership. So we like to go from like serious chat to like fun chat on this podcast as well, Brian. We like to keep people guessing about where we're going next. Um, and I've been dying to ask you this. So Actually, we're getting serious now. Uh, no, <laughs> we're getting a bit serious. We're getting really <laughs> unserious here. Um, I've been. Di- I-, I wanted to ask you this as the first question because I can't get an image of you out of my head. And it was when you signed for, uh, <laughs> well, when you became player manager at Middlesbrough and there was a photo shoot of you and your top half is a suit and your bottom half is your shorts and your socks and you're on the pitch. What did they say to you when they came up with this idea? Player manager, isn't it? No, well, I, I've got two situations <laughs> where I feel a little bit embarrassed about signing on the pitch at Old Trafford when Martin Edwards, the chairman, want me to do it. And I slaughter players for being soft and everything when they wear pink boots, white boots, all this sort of thing. And I look <laughs> at that photo and everybody's going, what about, what about the the, pearl, the curly perm? <laughs> you had a curly perm in that? Yeah, and I used to sit in uh, hairdressers with curlers in uh, for an hour or so and you go, what were you doing? But then Gary Neville comes out and he goes, what about Robbo's suit? Never mind the hairstyle. What about his suit? Now, when Gary Neville starts giving you stick about your fashion, <laughs> now you yeah, know no, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> so I had that one. And then when I went to Burrow, the commercial manager called Grim Forty, as uh, soon as I walked in, he went, Brian, got a great idea he says you don't get too many player managers he says player shorts and boots on <laughs> manager shirt tie jacket on uh, I went no chance and he went come on it's got and then Steve Gibson turned around and he went what are you doing Brian, it is a good idea oh no yeah Steve went it is a good idea and so like I've got the commercial manager and I've got the chairman <laughs> saying, let's do it. And so <laughs> I did it. And then even keeping a ball up. I, br- I broke my record. Gonna Google I, you, know, hey, you, you need to Google, Google the photo. Google. You need to Google it. Time I've seen yes. it today. I to kept it. it up three times. <laughs> 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 what did your wife say when she saw it? Uh, she never she never watches football or anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love that. Love that story. And yes, you have to Google the said picture. Okay, we're into our quick end of the podcast. Quick fire questions, never quick fire questions. So another um, question is coming from our wonderful listeners and viewers. Um, Killian on YouTube has asked, who would you compare yourself to in the modern game? Um, Declan Rice. Hey, that's quick fire. Come yes, on. I like that. Well, we I've got to keep this up. Fire. I know, but yeah. Yeah, I'm the worst at it. But go on. Would you? Would you? Would you agree? Yes. Yeah. Very nice. Oh my goodness! Oh, Sam just gave a one-word answer. <laughs> God, I wasn't ready for that. Okay. <laughs> Which of Man City or all Arsenal's title chances will be impacted the most by a defeat at the weekend? Mm. Arsenal. Oh, no, I've- I was going to say, I've not really looked at the running of both teams. Both um, difficult. Yeah, they've both got hard hard I games. So. I think Liverpool have got the best running, but yeah, there's some tricky ones in there for everybody. Yeah, well, I, I know that Liverpool play us and Arsenal play us. Um, yeah. You need to be on that form you played against Liverpool, though. City. If you if you go on the form you played against Everton. I, I, I just think, gotta, I, just, I, I just think right. with... Might it'll depend on Champions League as well, who stays in there. Yeah. Because it's more games. Um so that could have a bearing. Don't but if I had to put money on it, it would be City. 
to win it. Yeah. Yeah. You still on City to win it? I am. The game or the league? Or both? The league. The oh. league. Gosh, okay. Exciting. Okay. Um, Brian, you played with loads of big characters at United, but did you have a favourite like off-field character that you liked or a story of somebody that you loved off the field particularly that you could share with us? Uh, me and Whiteside always used to get on very well. I mean, I, I tell you what, Norman, Norm. Norman was a fantastic player. What a character. Um, great character, full of fun. Um, you know, but uh, me and him just hit it off on the pitch and then off the pitch, we hit it off as well. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> it means uh, every now and again when we could, we go for uh, just a couple of pints before we went home. No, you'd like to have gone out with them too? Well, I've had several pints when I was so... <laughs> Not just all together, though, over the years and years and years. Like I mean. yeah. so, so, I mean, our life was much different then. Like yeah. I mean, we would, we would, uh, we we met a lot in Robson's Bar in Benny's in Radcliffe, which was one of the most popular nightclubs in the northwest for many, many a year. Like I mean, so you see footballers from Liverpool, Everton, Manchester, Bolton. That was your Blackburn. bar. You had a bar. Yeah. In his name, a yeah. few years. Piano bar, it was, wasn't it? A piano bar, yeah, a piano and bar then yeah. Benny's nightclub. Benny, right. It was very popular very at popular, the time. Yeah, yeah so many, that is some stories many, about Benny's. Many a good night, many a good night had in in, in many a lock in after a game. No, no, I like it because you finished at uh, two. Uh, used to do a great breakfast. Breakfast, yeah. <laughs> Full Monty <laughs> breakfast. Full Monty <laughs> breakfast, yeah. Oh, before you went, before we went home, yeah. Yeah, yeah it, was. it was. It was good stuff then. <laughs> All right, and uh, I've got one last question for you, and I just want to apologise in advance and say I've spent many years trying to become a serious sports broadcaster, uh, asking you all the big, important questions that we all need to know, and then uh, I'm going to ask you this. So I apologise in advance. Um, Kobe, is this, may- is this from been sent in? Um, no, it's not been sent in, but um, we'd still like this. Is this is this is coming from the team here. Oh, the team, the right, team okay. here. I'm not taking full credit for this. Oh, I'm going to look at producer team. Will as well. Um, Kobe Mainu is set to apparently is being rumoured that he's going to follow Saka and get his own Nando's sauce. Kobe Mainu is going to get a Nando's Already? sauce apparently. Yeah. So what we'd like to know on this big deep question here on No Tippy Tappy Football, Brian and Sam. Football legends, what is your favourite condiment? <laughs> my sauce. Salt. My, <laughs> my sauce is, I have brown sauce on nearly everything. Oh! I uh, see, I'm completely the opposite, Sam. Uh, I always go tomato. Yeah, well. Not sauce. on me roast dinner, though. Okay, I, yeah, I, I yeah. never put tomato sauce on me roast dinner. No, sometimes. I combine brown and, and tomato sauce together if I'm eating a sausage roll. <laughs> How about that then? Beat that, Robo. <laughs> no, I to get a good answer. I, I'll leave you as the title <laughs> winner that, on that one. <laughs> Condiment king. <laughs> I like a garlic mayo, Sam, by the way. Very nice. There we go. What a question. If you would ever like to ask our guests any questions <laughs> like that, please do send them in. Um, Brian, thank you so much for being here. It's been thanks very much. Brian, thanks it's very been much. a pleasure. Good to see you. Pleasure. Thank, thank you. Well. Well. Thank, thank you. Time. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. And thank you, Sam. And a thank you to our listeners, as always. Don't be frightened to pleasure. Thailand, don't please. Be next week. No. Don't be frightened to subscribe either. Let's get that. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thanks for joining us for another episode of No Tippy Tappy Football brought to you by William Hill.